thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you guys came in because it was pretty much me and the camera a couple of minutes ago, so that's good. Um, so yeah, today we're going to look at something a little bit different. I think this is definitely the first Windows Talk we've had, and I think it's the only Windows Talk we've got uh, over the next two days, or from the last two days. Um, so I'm going to look at Windows Package Manager Landscape and I'm going to look at that through the eyes of Winget and Chocolate CLI which are the more popular package managers on Windows. So just a little bit about me first of all, my name is Paul Broadrith, I'm the Technical Engineering Manager at Chocolatey Software and we and my team are responsible for the Chocolatey products we're going to talk about here today, not the Winget ones, that's Microsoft. Um, I'm based in Glasgow in Scotland, I've got many years in IT in just different sectors and roles etc. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well for Cloud and Data Centre Management and Microsoft Azure. This talk is my personal opinion. This is not a marketing fluff for chocolatey products. This is also not a hit piece on Wingate either. I've tried to take a step back, um, have a look at the sort of Windows, as I said, package manager landscape and come up with some pros and cons in both. So the agenda, just going to quickly run through. Uh, we're going to look at that landscape. We're going to look at what it runs on, um, the, the package managers, installation options, configuration managers, repository managers, packages, manifests, submissions, community, all that stuff round about them. And we're going to touch on the end of organizational options because it's a little bit different from organizations uh, than it is for kind of home or power users. And also looking at privacy as well as that's incredibly important. So the Windows Package Manager landscape, we've talked a lot over the last couple of days about various Nix operating systems, and if we just pick Linux as a one that uh, I know, um, you're trying to use Linux without a package manager would be impractical. It's built into the operating system, whether it's apt or yum or DNF or Pac-Man or whatever, it's built in there and it would be, as I said, impractical to use it without that there. Um, Windows is a little bit different. Um, Windows really didn't have a package manager before Chocolatey CLI was released, and we'll look at that in a second. Windows was very much, uh, you found the software, whether you bought it, whether you obtained it, whether you got floppy disks, um, I am that old, I do remember those, USB keys, CDs, whatever. You got the software, you got it onto your machine, you run the installer, you clicked lots of buttons, it was very interactive, very manual process in order to get software onto a Windows machine, which was fine to start with. Um, but once you've got, you look at the organisational context, or even a power user context for uh, Windows, it becomes a little bit more impractical to be able to manage that. If you're an organisation with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of machines, trying to be able to um, have software install in those machines without having any interaction becomes difficult without something like a package manager. So that's what the, the environment, the landscape it was on Windows, very much the opposite of what we've got on, for example, Linux. Um, but before Chocolatey CLI was born, that was the, the situation. And once that was uh, released in March 2011, which is 12 and a half years ago, uh, a lot of people don't realise that Chocolatey CLI has been around for a very, very long time. It's uh, been around a lot longer than some of the package managers we've talked about over the last couple of days. And it's usually a surprise to people. But um, six months after that was released, we had the Chocolatey Community Repository was released as well, and that's the uh, repository that contains the chocolatey packages, public chocolatey packages, that you can consume with Chocolatey CLI. Fast forward to May 2020, and Microsoft released Winget. Uh, they call it the package manager, uh, sorry, the Windows package manager. So before I do a very brief overview, can I get a show of hands who know about Winget or Chocolatey, whether they use it, whether they have... That's quite, that's quite a lot, okay. I was, wasn't actually expecting that, so okay. Um, so just a really brief overview. Uh, Winget manages software using Manifest in a YAML format. Um, some people say it's not a package manager. I'm not going to get into that debate, but that's what uh, some people have said. Uh, it's released under an MIT license, which is great for some organisations, very permissive. It's open source, but there is no formal support for it at all. Chocolatey CLI manages packages using the extended NuGet packaging framework. So NuGet is a package manager on Windows, and it tends to, uh, it does run under things like Visual Studio. It'll um, download dependencies and libraries for your projects for Visual Studio. So it's very much a development tool. And Chocolatey took that, extended it, and also added in the script and support that makes Chocolatey CLI as powerful as it is. Uh, so it's tr tried and true and has been used for many years and continues to be used uh, in NuGet. Uh, it's released under an Apache 2 license, again, fairly permissive. Um, it's open source and there are supported commercial editions and tooling round about that as well. 
So what does it run on and what is supported? So for Winget, we've got Windows 10 and Windows 11, 22H2. That's all supported from there. That's part of the Microsoft uh, software life cycle. Uh, Chocolate CLI actually supports that as well, and we kind of adhere to that as well. It's, it's there, it's defined. Why not? Why reinvent the wheel? But Chocolate CLI will also run on several operating systems. These are supported currently by Microsoft, but not by Winget. So these are still active as part of that Microsoft uh, software lifecycle. Winget won't run on server-based operating systems at the moment. Um, Winget requires an integration with a Microsoft Store. That is not present on Windows uh, server operating systems, hence the reason why it won't work. Uh, there is talk about it will actually run on Windows Server 2022. It's not supported. You need to tweak it. Your mileage may vary, but apparently it does work. So that's what's supported. What does it actually run on, though? For Winget, it will run on all versions of Windows 11, because uh, that's where it was kind of uh, first born, if you like, what operating system it was first born on. Um, it will also run on anything beyond 1809 for Windows 10. Uh, 1809, when it was released, has functionality that uh, Winget requires, hence the reason why it requires that and later. Chocolate CLI, on the other hand, will run on all of these operating systems again, uh, right back to Windows 7 for your clients. It might even run on older, but Windows 7 we'll stick with, and all the way back to Windows Server 2003 as well. Now, there are still people running that, there are still people running Windows NT4. Uh, so I'm not saying Chocolate CLI will run on NT4, but at the last, uh, last time I did this talk, and I've only done it once before, somebody did approach me afterwards and say they'd got it running on a Windows uh, 2000 advanced server. Very old version, they had to tweak it and jump through some hoops, but apparently it works. But I didn't see anything, so I've not put it on this list, and it's not something we'd probably recommend. So again, uh, as I said, and I've repeated myself, if you're using something like Linux, the package manager is all part of the operating system, not for Windows, so you need to install it. So what are the installation options for it? So for Winget, they recommend you use the Microsoft Store App Installer app, and that will install Winget, and it will install all of the dependencies for Winget as well. The reason why that's recommended is that it will also update Winget as well in the background. Now, as far as I understand, Winget does not have a self-update uh, mechanism. You can't run Winget, upgrade Winget. It doesn't work. Um, so that's why they, they recommend that. Uh, you can also install it from GitHub. Um, it's just an Apex bundle file. It's got all of the uh, dependencies in there. It's about 200 and something megabytes. Um, it doesn't update, so you need to manually update that again. But if you're running a CI CD pipeline or some sort of build system, you probably don't care about that as you're throwing it away afterwards anyway. But that's one of the, the problems with that one. Uh, Windows 10 patch. Um, when I was testing this, I uh, spun up six virtual machines and I was you know, playing around with one get, trying to understand it. Um, that was Windows 10 and Windows 11 Pro Enterprise and Education. Uh, when I fully patched the Windows 10 versions, I got uh, Winget installed on one machine out of those three. I don't know why it was only one out of the three. I can, I can kind of guess, but um, I think it was the Pro version that would install on. But from my understanding, Winget doesn't run through Windows Update. It's not updated that way. It's updated through the Microsoft Store. So I'm not entirely sure how that all worked. My understanding could be incorrect, of course. Um, but so it's a sort of, uh, you can get it through a Windows 10 patch. Uh, Windows 11, it comes sort of out of the box. It's, it's there, but it's not there if you don't log in. Once you log in the first time to a Windows 11 machine, you'll get a message saying, uh, you know, Windows is configuring the computer, and after 15 minutes, Winget magically appears on the machine, but you must log in at least once in order for that to happen. Uh, so again, that's a sort of, it's there, but it's not really there. Uh, and finally, there's a chocolatey package. So you can install Winget from Chocolatey. I'm maintaining the, the Winget uh, chocolatey package. So I've put it in brackets and italics there because it's not supported by Microsoft, but it is supported by me. Um, so yeah, that, that works as well. Uh, from Chocolatey CLI, there was, um, up until version two of Chocolatey CLI, there was only one uh, installation method really that, that was used, and that was using the PowerShell script or the PowerShell commands at the website there for the Chocolatey website. And what you would do is you just run that in your terminal and it would download the signed install script and it would install it. Uh, after, as of version 2, we released an MSI. <clears throat> 
uh, customers and community members were asking for that, so that they could deploy it through things like SCCM, for example, uh, rather than having to execute the, the script on their, uh, their organisational machines. So we produced the MSI for that, for installation of Chocolatey CLI as well. And, and as we had the MSI, we just thought, hey, why don't we just do a Winget package as well? So there is a Winget package for Chocolatey CLI as well, which we do officially support. So you can use Chocolatey CLI to install Winget and Winget to install Chocolatey CLI. So package managers rule. So we're going to look a little bit about supported sources now. We're going to look at configuration managers and we're going to look at repository managers as well. <coughs> I'm going to take a quick break. So supported sources, uh, as we kind of talked about the Microsoft Store, excuse me, <coughs> for Winget. Um, out of the box, Winget comes with uh, the Microsoft Store and the Winget Packages repository um, already pre-configured for you. That's a little bit of a blessing and a curse. Uh, the Microsoft Store uh, requires you to agree to Microsoft's terms before you can use it. Even if you've not installed software from the Microsoft Store, if you go and try and upgrade it without specifying the actual source, it'll keep asking you for the terms. It's very irritating and I wish they would change it, but it is what it is. Um, so those two come out of the box. There's also an option for an Azure REST source, so uh, Winget requires a REST API at the back of it. Um, in order to be able to, to query for packages, etc. So there is a GitHub repository, and there may be other, or other areas as well, but um, you can do a one-click install, I believe, and it'll actually deploy that into Azure for you. And you can use that for your private feeds, uh, for your Winget packages, or public ones, if you really want to. Um, there was talk about changing that a little bit and making it AWS as well, but I believe there's been no traction on that. That was a third party, that wasn't Microsoft themselves. Obviously, Microsoft want you to use Azure, they want you to use Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft ecosystem. There is also a static web source option. Um, this one I don't like talking about too much because it might cause people to go off and investigate it. It's impractical for use, really. Um, you have to take various files from the Winget packages repository tweak them, change them, edit them, manipulate them, whatever you need to do, and then put them in some sort of static website. It's a bit of a, a hassle, and I think it's more has uh, problems than it's worth. So I would suggest you don't try it, but it's there as an option if you really want to spend your weekend playing around with uh, package repositories. There is no source authentication in Winget as far as I can see it. Um, so again, I've put that in italics because maybe I've missed it, and I think it would be quite a fundamental thing. So I can't understand why it's missing, but it may well be. Uh, Winget's quite uh, an early tool. Well, it's three, three and a bit years old, um, but they're still adding to it. So if you need authenticated feeds for your packages, you might need to look somewhere else or put some other uh, permissions and security and wrap it around something else so that you get that there. I've also got their file share and local folder in italics. Uh, the reason being is Winget will be able to install a package manifest from a folder. You can't say, here is all my package manifests in this folder and get it to install. That doesn't work. Um, Winget, at the last time I looked as well, and that was six months ago when I did this talk, didn't support UNC paths either. So your file share will have to be maybe a mapped uh, drive to your Windows machine. That may have changed. Maybe go and have a look at that. Uh, from Chocolatey CLI, uh, Chocolatey CLI it has the Chocolatey Community Repository uh, on there by default, and so you can get the, your Chocolatey packages from there. It's the largest Windows repository, it's larger than Winget, um, and we'll have a look at that uh, shortly. It is older, so you would probably expect that. It does also support Nougat V2 and V3, which are really popular repository types, um, and the vast majority of repository managers support those, and we'll see uh, that in just a second. It also supports a static Nougat v3 source. Um, there's various tools out there that will actually stand up a static v3 uh, site for you, if you like. Um, so that that's, that's easily used. And every time you push a new package to it, it just rebuilds the site. So you can use things like GitHub Pages, possibly Netlify, and those kind of things to do it. Uh, again, Chocolatey CLI supports alternative sources. So there is a Winget source coming soon where you'll be able to use Chocolatey CLI to see all your Winget packages and be able to bring them uh, into the tooling uh, that Chocolatey provides for the commercial editions. Um, so you can have that single plane of glass to see all of your, your packages. Um, finally, the file share and local folder. You can just point Chocolatey CLI to a file share or local folder of all of your packages. Um, you don't point it to one, all of them um, is what you do. Um, for example, when I'm standing up uh, virtual machines on my laptop here, I use a local package folder on my machine with all the packages that I need for that. 
So configuration repository managers, um, Winget is supported in Intune, as you probably expect, it's a Microsoft product after all. Um, it's also supported in any package, which is a, a PowerShell package management provider. So if you're not using PowerShell, it's probably of no interest to you. But um, when gets supported under that as well. I've also put D PowerShell DSC there. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with that. It's a kind of configuration management tool that uses PowerShell. Um, from what I can understand, from my point of view, uh, PowerShell DSC doesn't support Winget. I can't find anything for it. But according to the documentation that does, you can use a command called Winget configure and uh, give it packages and various configuration information. It'll actually bootstrap a machine for you. Um, and as part of that, it will download DSC resources to help with that process. So that to me is not a DSC provider or a DSC resource for Winget, but Microsoft documentation says it is. So I've put that in there just to be complete. You'll notice on the right hand side, there's no repository managers uh, that support Winget feeds. There is a website called winget.pro that you can actually uh, buy a, a, sorry, buy a subscription to that will allow you to stand up a private Winget feed in that. It's not really a repository manager, it's more of a website, um, and it doesn't support anything else but OneGet, so I haven't put it in here, whereas the ones that we're going to see in just a second are actual repository managers. So it's an option, potentially. Um, as we can see there, um, these all support Chocolatey CLI. Um, you would no surprise from the repository managers, they all support Nougat V2 and V3 feeds. Um, Artifactory and Nexus probably been uh, one that you'll have seen before, or two that you'll have seen before. Uh, and the configuration managers are popular ones there, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, you'll have seen those two. So there's recipes, there's playbooks, and there's whatever else you call your configuration manager uh, configuration um, for all of those as well. Packages manifest, uh, let's look at that. I realise I'm moving through this quickly. This was originally a 45 minute talk that I've had to chop down, so I'm going a bit fast, but hopefully you're getting uh, the information out of this. Um, so to create a package manifest on Winget, you use a separate tool called Winget Create, um, and you point it to your installer, and it will pull information out of that installer if it, if it understands it. Um, and it's a simple question-based sort of approach. You go through it one, two, three, four, four, you know, that kind of thing. And it'll provide defaults if it's pulled that information out of the MSI or MSIX, for example. And it creates multiple YAML files. A, a Winget package is uh, three YAML files. It tends to be, I think that's the minimum. There might be two, but I'm pretty sure it's three. Um, but because of the format, uh, it's, there's no flexibility in that. It's just, you know, what is in that YAML file? It's those particular fields that are filled in, you don't really have any flexibility. If the installer, for example, wants to do something different and you want to tweak it after it's been deployed, there is no option for that. It will only run installers and add supported formats. It does support a zip format, but from my, again, my understanding, the zip has to contain the installer itself. It's not like you could put scripts in the zip and then have that deployed onto the end of the machine in a particular folder. It doesn't appear to support that. So. But you can submit directly from that tool as well, which is useful. So once you go through the steps, it'll push it up. That's it, off it goes. Chocolatey CLI uses the Choco new command, just very similar, except it's not a separate tool, it's part of uh, the, the Chocolatey CLI uh, application. It will find defaults from most installers. It supports 22 <coughs> installer types on Windows at the moment, and there are more than that. Believe it or not, there are just so many installer types on Windows, and um, just to make everybody's life interesting. The metadata file that it creates is a simple XML format. Whenever I generally say XML, people shriek in horror um, just from past experiences. But this is just very simple XML, just describing the metadata for the package. And you use the push command from the chocolatey uh, application again. It's just choco space push space whatever the application is and where you're pushing it to, whatever your source is. But it's part of that, and you know, just in contrast to Winget's no flexibility in the YAML format, we've got um, PowerShell scripts inside chocolatey packages that allow you to do what you want. If you can do it in PowerShell, you can do it in a chocolatey package. Um, and I call it whatever's in the package, I call it the payload. If you've got scripts, license keys, register keys, whatever it is, once that's dumped onto the file system, you can manipulate it from there and deploy it to where you need to. Community repositories, and I'm running close to time, so I'm going to be uh, a bit quick on this. Uh, what the, my experience with Winget here is when I pushed up the chocolatey CLI uh, package that I talked about earlier. Um, the steps were very unclear. Um, I'm not really, it just talks about validation, installation, and scanning of your package. That's awesome, but I, there was no more detail to that. I, so I'm assuming that when things go wrong, they talk to you about it a bit more. But yeah, I would like a bit more information there on what's happening. The antivirus that they used was Defender and Other. 
but I didn't know what the other was. There was nothing again to tell me if there was a false positive, who I report things to. Again, maybe that comes out in the, uh, at the end when you know, there's a problem and they talk to you about it. You cannot add non-silent installers. On Windows, there is a lot of bad installers. Um, Logitech, I'm looking at you in particular. Um, their installers are very, very difficult to make silent. Um, and other uh, software vendors as well seem to go out of their way to make things more difficult than it should be. They don't want automation. They want you to have to click buttons through their uh, UI, which is not a traditional Windows UI a lot of the time. So if you've got that type of thing, you cannot create a, a, a WinGet package from that because you can't do it silently. So th th there is no option there. Um, if you get any false positive antivirus scans, they're not accepted, that's it. I think this harks back to there was a problem with um, malware or you go and look it up, I don't want to be speaking out a ton, but there was a problem with the WinGet Packages repository early on and I think they've taken a very hard line from then onwards um, about what they do. So if there's any false positive antivirus scans, it doesn't go any further. Your interactions via APR comments, if you used to GitHub, it's, it's easy enough to do and that's fine. Chocolate CLI, on the other hand, it's got a documented package validation and moderation process. I've got a task to go and kind of freshen that and make it more up to date, but it's documented there and all the steps we go through. The antivirus is used as uh, various tools. There's over 70 AV scanners, and um, that's fairly straightforward. You can script non-silent installers, so you've got those problematic installers, you can just script them. We work with maintainers. I'm part of the chocolatey team. I'm also part of the chocolatey moderation team as well. And we work with installers on those AV false positives and package issues. And again, interaction via moderation comments, pretty much like GitHub, but it's on a website. WinGet is 4,800 manifests and 33,000 versions. Uh, chocolatey uh, community repository is 10,000 packages and 201,000 versions. And it's got currently 2.6 billion downloads. That was as of yesterday. I don't have any stats on what WinGet's downloads will be. Organisational options, I'm going to actually go over very quickly because I've got just under three minutes left. Um, Organisations obviously have different requirements to home users or power users. I'm going to skip some of this, but uh, open source licences are important to organisations. Um, WinGet, in this case, is tied to Microsoft and Azure. You're not in that ecosystem. It might be problematic for you. Um, there's limited repository manager options, as we looked at, and there's, it's free, and there is no support for it other than community support. If you're in an organisation, you have issues, and you have a Microsoft support subscription, don't call them because they won't help you with it. Chocolatey CLI, um, again, open source. It's flexible and decentralised, and it integrates with the tools that you already have in your workflow as well. It's not tied to Microsoft and Azure or any particular uh, tooling or any particular you know, repository managers. Um, it's... Uh, free as well, and there is commercial support available with the usual SLAs and, and additional tools round about that. <clears throat> Two minutes left. Privacy. This is the one that really bothers me about WinGet. Um, WinGet collects data by default, and in my opinion, you're collecting data without consent if that's what you do. I don't like that. Um, there's an opt-out rather than it being opt-in. If that's a problem for you, then you, maybe WinGet's not uh, the product for you. It honours the Windows privacy settings, <clears throat> but there's a dependent package it uses, the Web uh, View 2 runtime, that collects data with no opt-out. So even if you're installing it and you opt out from WinGet, there's kind of questions about whether you're actually opting out entirely from that. Chocolate CLI doesn't take any telemetry. It doesn't phone home. Even the commercial editions don't phone home. Um, the community repository, if you use it, records the IP address and the package that you've downloaded so that we can give you the stats, 2.6 billion downloads, and use it for excessive use monitoring. The community repository is for the many, not the few. So if it's been abused, we have to do something about that. There's also a comment there. I just I've left the URL on the screen. Rob Reynolds, the founder of Chocolate Software, asked are told um, the WinGet team is part of that GitHub comment about what Chocolate does with you know, data collection, i.e. nothing, and encouraged the WinGet team to do the same. It didn't unfortunately help, but you'll be able to see more information there about what Chocolate does and what it's going to do in the future, which TLDR is nothing. We're not collecting data. So as I'm right at time, I'm not going to go over the, the summary. I'm going to just jump over and ask for questions. Oh. Thank you, Paul. Are there any questions uh, from the audience? You can question him online? Oh, you got a question online. Show me. Uh, Zama Strat, 
asks, what is the relation between chocolatey and winget with scoop? What is the relationship between chocolatey winget and scoop? Yep. Okay. Um, Probably going to say something controversial, but Scoop is not a package manager. So that's one of the reasons why it's not here and I haven't talked about it. That's not my words, that's actually the author's words. Um, Scoop will uh, uses uh, JSON manifest, I think it does, um, to be able to install software using those instructions that are within that. So it's not there. But Scoop's been around for a very long time. I think it was 2013 the first commit into the repository was. So it's 10 years it's been about now. Um, just slightly younger than uh, chocolatey uh, CLI, but not much. Um, I don't know much about Scoop beyond that. I know it's a PowerShell uh, software rather than something like uh, uh, chocolate CLI that's C, C sharp and it's compiled. Uh, when gets C++ uh, it's compiled. So beyond that, I can't really say much about it. Um, but it's not a package manager, and that's the, one of the reasons why I didn't bring it into this talk. I was hoping someone would ask that question. Thank you. Uh, I think we can do one more question as the next one is getting mic'd up. You had a question? Yeah. Question. Just I want to say thank you uh, for Charlie. Uh, you know, as a Linux user that occasionally has to use Windows, it makes me feel a little bit not so bad because I can actually just, you know, install some software without having to do it the Windows way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We get that Good comment ball. quite a lot. People moving from, the, they're using a Windows machine at work, but Linux at home, and how do they work with uh, Windows without the package manager there? And we get that quite a lot, so thank you. Thank you, Paul.